Hi everyone, this is Arena. Welcome to the Grow and Learn podcast, to the Heal and Learn channel, wherever you're watching us. My guest today is Joey Drollshagen. Drollshagen, I said it first, um, I, I said it right the first time, <laughs> uh, but this time I may be messing it up a little bit. My guest is a very accomplished uh, person with a 28-year uh, career in uh, business. He was a VP of sales in corporate America. Uh, in recent years, he developed a methodology for shooting um, to high success people in entrepreneurship, people in real estate. Uh, we're going to be speaking about a subliminal method that he developed called subliminal mind technique. So I'm welcoming Joey with a high curiosity today to hear about the method, about his journey, everything. Hi, Joey. Awesome to be here with you. It's, it's subconscious mindset training, SMT. And you actually said my last name better both times than what I say it, Zarina. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> uh -huh. It compensates for the for the confusion in the method. <laughs> uh, let's let's with the method. It's the most interesting thing. Um, I think for me and I suppose for my audience as well. How did you, after so many years of um, corporate career and Mm -hmm. how did you come up with this method did it come after you left your corporate career did you develop it before that what's the story of this method you know, aside from the corporate career you know i come from a a, a, a very low-income family outside detroit michigan there were five of us kids and my mom and dad stayed married till death did them part and 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 i watched them struggle my entire youth to have enough money to keep a roof over our head and groceries and and and, and i knew it wasn't right and i was never going to live like that and then I found myself in my 20s, in my late teens and 20s, repeating that same patterns and conditioning. And yet I saw other people who didn't have that. So I became a student of the works I do today at 23 years old. And I've been studying this stuff. And, and honestly, I started out like I had this passion in my heart that I wanted to and, and make sure nobody ever had to live like my parents did. But I didn't know how to do so myself. So I set out as a student. So this has been, I've been a student of the works I do today since I was 23. And it's taken me decades to end up coming up with the, developing the SMT method. And it came with a lot of coaching, a lot of investing in myself, therapy, you know, self-studies, books. I would take books and and and, and create ex, uh, experiments out of the materials in the, in the book, you know, all the while building that corporate career and, and keep leaning into it to, I, it finally came about through ways that were not, I couldn't have planned for where I started understanding the total mindset, the conscious and subconscious and how the subconscious is what triggers the brain waves to the actions we take or don't take. So if we have, if we're conditioned to struggle, it's not going to trigger the brain waves to bring about results that surprise us. It, in fact, Zarina, when I was in my early twenties, if something came easy to me, I felt like I didn't earn it or I didn't deserve it. Hmm. And, and, and so it was deal. So I've been a guinea pig of all the works that I teach today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had quite a few guests that have developed their methods and all of them, of course, entered the subconscious mind because you know, by now, I, I guess we all know that that's the way to reprogram your mind. Uh, and yet there are so many people going to uh, weekend retreats, to gatherings, to all kinds of studies. I mean, you yourself have been through, you said, I don't know, 20 years of education. Um and why does it take so long after there were already developed methods and the majority of the people that attend these um, workshops don't come up with the result with the results they invested their money and time for, right? So why does this happen? Yeah, I, I, multiple reasons. One of the things I do different than a lot of coaching programs. And I've taken really good coaching programs and I've taken really poor, you know, I've invested in really poor coaching programs. And one of the things I came up with that was different, that until I figured out another way around it, I would not have gone into coaching is I don't tell anybody what they need. I don't give anybody an ABC map that leads to D. And here's why. So much of this stuff with the subconscious, with, with, you know, manifesting things like that and stuff, it's all taught as a one size fit all. Hmm. But what happens is your conditioning, if we broke it down, the conditioning in your subconscious is different than mine. It's unique to every one of us. I have four siblings. I told you yeah. when we talk about stories of things that happened growing up, 
all five of us have a different story if we explained what that was like, because we all have unique conditioning. So what I've been able to do with the SMT method, which is the vehicle within all of the works I do, is, is, is put it together in a way where anybody can pick it up and start using it, but the experience is unique to the individual. So it's not a one size fit all. It's not a, a one piece roadmap that'll get everybody to the same place in their life. Because what I found for me is a lot of the coaching programs that I invested in, I would go through it and they promised all the things that were going to change and everything that was going to happen and retreats like you were talking about and books and all this stuff. And I would get to the end and I started checking that stuff. And realistically, those types of coaching programs, less than 1% of the people following that program ever achieve anything near what the person who's teaching it is. Because that person teaching it has the uniqueness of their conditioning. So they've developed their roadmap to success, we'll say. Mm -hmm. Your roadmap isn't going to look like mine. But when I help you identify and clear that conditioning and shift that conditioning that keeps us in lack or keeps us in excessive efforts or massive actions or things like that, when we shift that, it opens the doorway. Well, where you go from that doorway opening isn't going to be where I go, but it's going to be tailored for you. Does that make sense, Zarina? It makes sense, yes. And I, I'm wondering whether this is um, a link to uh, limiting beliefs. Does it, it, it seems like it's linked to limiting beliefs. Is there something in addition or how is it different from the concept of elimin eliminating limiting beliefs? It's not eliminating limiting beliefs. It's shifting our conditioning. So we have a conscious mind and, and we all know this or a lot of people know this. The conscious mind is what we focus on. We have control over the conscious mind. Our conscious mind is a knowing. It's what we, it's when somebody starts a business, let's say, or goes into real estate, they know what they want to achieve there and what that life is going to look like like that. And then we have the subconscious mind. In the subconscious mind, there's what I call a motherboard that hosts all of our information of our beliefs, our patterns, our paradigms, our experiences. A lot of times, Serena, we can have conditioning that we've never experienced, but because people told us what happened and what happened to them or somebody they know, it becomes part of our conditioning. And so what happens is subconscious in that motherboard is what triggers our brain waves to the actions we take or don't take. So when you have somebody who believes that you cannot grow beyond 5% in their business year to year, year over year, they will never grow beyond that 5% because that's what they're conditioning. Our conditioning ultimately determines how far we can go in life. Mm -hmm. The good news is we can shift that conditioning. We can work within that conditioning and open that up to allow it to, for, to shift it. And in doing so, we're literally increasing the potential of how we live our life. Mm -hmm. It makes absolute sense. I'm just wondering, this conditioning also applies to the goals you set to yourself. For example, if, if you set a certain goal, this might be also a result of conditioning uh, on both sides, both a low and a high goal. You may be overshooting it yourself and, uh, you know, trying to satisfy somebody else's expectation just as much as you might be underpinning your potential. It, it really all depends where it's coming from. If I'm setting a goal based on somebody else's expectations, I'm kind of started out in the wrong direction. But realistically, every, every uh, individual organization or corporation that I work with, I start with developing a dynamic vision. And when I say a dynamic vision, it's a vision, it's beyond what we think we can, we, we have no idea how the heck we're going to achieve that. So it is based on lofty things. But at the end of my career, I was helping, I've assisted foundries who were in bankruptcy get back into profitability. And we've done so at times with six, eight, nine months where we've been able to make that shift and have new owners come in and dump $12 million in operations and, and things like that and, and take it from a three month a week operation to a five day a week or a three day a month operation to a five day a week. So I, I help people come out of the gate by, because in our knowing we want way more than what we can perceive how the heck we can get. Our desires are for more, but we so we so much limit those and drop those down to what we think we're capable of. And so that's why there is such a gap between the potential of an individual and what they're actually achieving. 
And so in developing that vision, that starts closing the gap. As we start aligning, you know, where the knowing is, like I said, in the conscious, the subconscious is a doing. As we start bringing mindset alignment to it and closing that gap between the knowing doing, now we start achieving those things. And then all of a sudden we start bringing it up higher and we end up closer to that potential point of what's possible for us. Mm -hmm. So can you share a few steps from the, from this methodology that you developed? You said that uh, the first part is developing the vision as far as I call it. Absolutely, you. yeah. Okay. I start with developing what I call a dynamic vision. And I have a, there's a whole, you know, like a, a, a process I take my clients through in developing that. But it's really about getting clear on what it is you really want. Not And, and this is where it can get a little tricky because so often I'll talk to people and I'll say, well, what do you want out of life? What do you really want out of your business? And they'll go, I don't know. And they really don't know. Or they limit it to what they think is possible for them. They'll limit it based on the economy, based on competition, based on all these outside factors. But we know, and this is evidence of what I'm saying, we know that there's businesses that just thrive in a down economy. And then we all know businesses who struggle during a boom. And it really is based on the starting with the mindset there that sets that. So once we align, once we get that vision, then what we do is we start opening up, we start stepping into, we develop, one of my processes is helping develop systems of accelerating habits. So instead of just taking massive actions, exhaustive efforts that end up just fatiguing us and getting less and less results for each effort we take is we start aligning with the things that really work and feel good. And, 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 you know, we get excited about doing one of them for me is conversations like this. I love having these conversations. One of the things that is not it for me is going through my dress, my desk drawer here, my desk drawer at home, my counsel in my vehicle and pulling all my receipts together to do taxes <laughs> every year. So I have somebody do those things for me and I spend my time doing the things that really I feel good doing. And in doing so, what we do is we, we, we're living better because we're doing the things we want to do. So we want to do it more often. And, and then in, in doing so, we're turning on that attraction factor so we can start attracting the things to us we want and getting into alignment with what we want in that vision. So once we have the vision, it's all about aligning to that vision, not aligning to the outside situations and circumstances like the economy and competition and, and things like that. And those are just speed bumps. That's just the way it looks as the vision is unfolding. Mm hmm how do you overcome the initial bumps, though? Because there's the period of adjustment in which, yeah, you need to uh, uh, vibe nicely and according to your vision, but you still need to do your taxes. And if, if you've got nobody doing them for you, just as an example, how do you overcome these temporary hurdles? Well, there are some things I have to do. And when I did my own taxes like that, what I did instead of going into it and going, I can't stand doing this. Oh my God, it takes forever. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. What I did is I started looking at, man, I'm, I can't wait to hit that send when I send everything to the accountant. I can't wait to hit that send button. And I know I'm done for another year. And in doing that, it would help me to sit down and then do the thing, even the things that I don't care so much about doing, but I have to. It helps me to get through those things with less upset, less emotional drain, less fatigue, less, you know, all of that and, and get it done to hit that send button. I get clear on what I want to achieve, what the end point of that is. And that's the same as a vision, just in mini form. Mm -hmm. Would you say this is the most important part to be absolutely clear on, on your vision? It would be um, absolutely clear. It, it, a, a vision is as alive as we are. So as we change, as we grow, as we expand, our vision is going to change as well. But but it is getting clear on that vision of what that looks like, what it feels like, like what's it what's it going to feel like to live that life? Yes, and and that's why I start everybody with that because if you when you when you think about it, coming from that point of what seeing where we want to be. It makes the pathway so much more enjoyable, around, you know, around achieving it. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, when I tell you this, you know, I don't typically throw up facts like this, but I've helped business owners within nine months go from $7.5 million was their highest year in 13 years to $23 million. Yeah, I actually read on your uh, website some um, very impressive 
results yeah, that, that, that your coaches, uh, sorry, that the people clients. you're coaching have achieved. Yes. Uh, I can't open the website at the moment, but there was something like a complete turnaround, like 10x in six months or so in revenues. Um, I've, helped, like, I've helped a wholesale company in up in Ohio go from $300,000 a year revenue in five years being the best, leaning on the line of credit to cover the gap within less than a year going to $3 million a year and now going to 10, going to above $5 million a year to heading towards 10. Do you See, also one of the hardest things when you ask me, cause you asked me the question, I'm sorry, but you said, what's the hard, the one of the hardest things is people want to do better than they're doing, but they're so stuck in their logical mind as far as what's possible. When I tell somebody that a 13 year old business, their highest year is 7.5 within nine months went to $23 million. They, they, they throw that away and say, that's BS. That, that's impossible because it's not realistic. And what we do is we use our logical mind to live in, in what we call realistic, what we see with our eyes, what we can pick up and touch and things like that. But you can call this, you know, somebody could call this client and ask them and they would confirm all this of it. It is real. And what, so part of the whole thing is, is opening up that beginner mindset for people. And it's one of the things I look at. And, and if it's not possible to do that, I, I will pass on working with a client. They have to be open-minded enough to believe, to really believe that they can do better than what they're currently achieving. Mm. Do you also consult them um, on, on business issues alongside with the mindset? Is it also well, having 28 years in, in business up to a VP and helping companies? Absolutely. Yes. That's part of the, that's part of the whole package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I don't do is I never tell somebody what they need to do. What I will help them do is mastermind options and see which one feels best for them. And then that's the action they take. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am very, very much about eliminating waste in our effort, in our focus, in all of that, and, and really putting it into what matters. Mm -hmm. So you work with uh, the founder or the managing director or who, who is your contact that, you, that you're... Yeah, I mean, typically I'll work with the owner of Realtor. I'll work with the Realtor. I'm working with a company uh, right now who has uh, multi salespeople in different areas. And so I just went down to spend some time in the panhandle determining what, what's the total potential, what potential does he have. We hired somebody and now I'm going to go down next week and work with that salesperson. So I do that as well. Okay. And, and, and why, do you, why is your method called subconscious? How do you enter the subconscious mind? Just with a conversation or do you use some methodology to relax the people? What, what is your method? Everything we do in developing the vision and putting the vision on and stepping into the vision, everything we do is structured to bump up against the conditioning that's causing the limitation. Because most people don't even realize that's what's limiting their life. They blame their situation, circumstances, the conditions outside of them and everything else. But that's never the real truth because somebody else is thriving in that same with those same conditions. So what the whole program, is, which you know, is geared towards identifying that limitation so that we can shift that and open that up to elevate the potential in what people are achieving, business owners are achieving. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people, even it's, it's funny, it's, uh, because when I tell people, and I'll ask people this in a workshop I'll do, I'll say, How, do you believe that you can, you know, double, triple, quadruple, whatever you want in your business, and at the same time experience more free time in your life? People will go, no. No. In order to have a successful business, you got it. There's a trade off. You got to be willing to put in the time, the effort, the energies and everything else in, in, in order to do that. And somebody who that's their end line belief and they don't want to change that or willing to even look at something different. I can't help that person. Mm. And that was really hard for me because part of my driving passion is see my parents were were such such good people. And seeing them struggle for so long. So part of my part of my reasoning for getting into this was first and foremost, it was because I was living the way I was living and couldn't stand it. But as I started learning this stuff that what really brought me to, to want to bring it outside is I don't like I want to I want to help as many people as I can not have to live like my parents did in that struggle state. But I, it took me a while to learn what I do isn't necessarily for those who need it. It's for those who want it, who are willing to say, OK, 
enough is enough. I'm tired of living this way. I'm willing to look at other options. That's somebody I can help. Mm -hmm. Do you have a hundred percent success rate? I do almost a thousand clients over the past decade. I offer a money back guarantee with my program. So if, if, if we're working together and you invest in it and you don't get, because I've worked with a lot of coaching programs and didn't get any results from it. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody's, you know, somebody's investment if, if it, they didn't get anything out of it. And that's why I'm I'm somewhat selective when I start working with somebody. If they don't have an open mindset, if they're not willing to believe outside of their, their current conditioning, I can't help them. And I don't want to take their money, you know, their investment. Yeah, that's impressive. And um, I'm really curious now, okay, because it works with the subconscious mind. Some say you need about 20 days to reprogram for the synapses to find their new pathways and so on. How long does it take to turn around the conditioning of a person? Um, I wouldn't know the complete answer. In, in one specific area, I can tell you, but we have so much conditioning going on within us, you know, that 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 applies to where we put effort, don't put effort, things like that. So it's really it's really like the, it's a starting point when we start. And I give people tools right from the moment we start working together to start bringing about that change and start noticing that noticing that limitations. And so but it, it, it's really an unfolding of than it is a quick switch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but right from the first week I work with somebody, they start noticing a change. Yeah. How long do, how does your program take? I work with people for six months. Mm -hmm. I do have a, a one year. So I have a, 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 a three month program and a six month program. And a lot of my clients will go for through the three months because it gets the principles, all that stuff going. They start experiencing change in their business. And then we get into the second, which is a business ignite that really is about quickly scaling and launching and, and getting up to that level. And one of the things I forgot to say, the business owner that went from 7.5 to $23 million, mm -hmm. the year she, we, she did so was the only year of her adult life that she took five weeks of vacation during that time period. Oh, wow. Amazing. Mm. So when I say you can grow your business and open up free time in your life while doing it, and it can be an enjoyable process, that's what I'm all about. Yeah. How can people get a taste of what you're doing? Do you have some recorded courses or some information that? Uh, yeah, some... Anybody can go to my website. Now, I try to put a lot of information. <laughs> it might be overpacked, but I try to put a lot of information, videos, things like that out there for people to understand more of what I do and how I do it and the results and things like that. But the other thing, anybody, you know, can reach out to me. I mean, my cell phone number, and I'll give it now if we do it at the end, but it's 864 614 Three 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 three. Anybody can reach out to me and spark a conversation. Um, you can get a hold of me on my website. If you're in another country, you can't get through, you know, country codes and things like that. We'll set up a Zoom. And one of the things I'll gift you with is give you a four package of meditations that'll help you start making some of those shifts on your own before you even step into it. Other people will call me up and they'll go explain more about the vision. And I have no problem doing that. I, my, my whole purpose is to serve and help people live better lives. Mm -hmm. And however I can do that, I will. Mm -hmm. well, what are the meditations uh, about? Are these your meditations narrated or is it subliminal music? What, what are they like? No, it's, it, it's meditations where I kind of walk through starting to identify some of those limitations and start putting more empowering beliefs in place of them. So I grab some of the basics. I grab the things with struggling, you know, to, to working 24 hours a day. I grab some of the things about um, with, with, you know, and so it's different conditioning factors that are pretty common amongst, you know, all of us, even though it's not exactly the same, but it just starts making some shifts and changes and, 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 and opening up the mind to open up the conscious mind to be able to see things a little bit different, to start taking a little bit, you know, to start being able to drive that to taking different actions from the subconscious. Hmm. How do you deal with your own life when you're, when you know these tools and are applying them? Is it a constant growth or do you have periods of just observing, doing nothing? How does your life go? I would like to say that I know these tools and man, my life is never have a problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but that wouldn't be true. You know, even with coaching these things, I'm not always on my A game every single day. 
right? So there's times when something will happen. It'll take me a little bit and it'll pull me back into some of that old programming and stuff like that. And I'll start mm -hmm. going. But the, the really cool thing is what used to happen and I get a charge for positive and then I'd go back to living that way for six months or a year. It might be a half a day now or a few hours or things like that. And I'm able to take these tools and, and bring that back, you know, on track to where, to, to, to where I'm ultimately directing the life I want to live. Mm -hmm. And well, that's awesome. really what it's about is, is, is we are so powerful, you know, um, uh, Marianne Williamson, I never say it the right way, but I love her quote is, you know, being powerless is not our big fear. What we're really afraid of is how powerful we really are. Mm -hmm. And helping people tap into that and see the goodness in it and then see how that flows into other people's lives from there is, is, is what my life fulfillment is, comes from. Mm -hmm. Inspiring, inspiring. Is there another um, tool that you might want to share? Something that is easy to implement maybe other than, you know, look. Yeah, getting to know, getting to know the vision would be one. And yeah, I'll, I'll share another tool. Another tool that you can use is, I say, I'm trying to think how to say this, is 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 more so coming from the vision. Now you have an idea. And, and one of the things I'll say, to get a vision, I always am, am very direct about writing it down. And the re reason for that is when we write it, we're making a level of commitment of it's important to us. When we keep it up in our head, you know those things can just change and waffle around and everything else. And it's never solid. When we put it on paper, we have something solid that we can go back to. And then I'll tell people if something happens, if conditions or, or you know, finances or, or something happens, continue to go to your vision and put that vision on. Get in that place of seeing you living that life. And that'll be a starting point for start bringing that about. Now, if there's conditioning, it's not going to really fully take care of the conditioning, but at least get us past so many of those little hurdles that don't even really matter, but they seem to when they come up. Like it can have a huge impact. And so we spend so much time in frustration or annoyed or nervousness or things like that, where really when we get into that place of a vision, they seem like more like little speed bumps rather than controlling of, of our outcome. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Joey, you've worked with um, clients that were already successful. Maybe they weren't growing, but they were successful. Making seven and a half million uh, a year is being successful, right? So you managed to double, triple their income. What about people that start off with a similar position that you started off with? Yeah, the, the, I mean, that's really what I developed it for, honestly. Like, like so, you know, the 12-week program I talked about, is to help get the initial tools, get the things stirring, get the conditioning shifting and things like that. And then and then once we do that, like I have a lot of people that will come to me that are in jobs and they can't stand what they're doing and they don't know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to help them identify through that visioning and things like that, identify what that is, get that, that vision together. And then we start moving in that direction. We start opening up, start taking those actions and things like that. And then when we go into the second phase, it's all about quickly scaling it. So now we take the first phase, we get the tools, we get the conditioning, start moving and things like that. And then in the second phase, we start to quickly scale, which taps into another level of subconscious conditioning. A uh, lot, one of the things that really comes up that I see, I'm surprised, is people who have a, a four, six, seven, eight million dollar business is they can't see themselves doing better than that. Not that they want to, but they can't see themselves doing that. So the way I define success in business isn't by how much revenue you have. It's is the organization where you want it to be. If it is, if somebody has a $7 million organization, they want to take it to 25 and they get to 25, it, that probably wouldn't be somebody I work with. But somebody who has a 10 or $12 million business and part of them wants to take it to 25, but they have something that they feel is holding them, but that's somebody I can assist. Somebody who's in, in a place of, of misery with what they're doing right now, whether they know or don't know what it is. A lot of people I come across have their, their J-O-B job and then they started this business, but it's almost kind of like a hobby to them, but they really have a passion towards it and it's helping them get that rolling. And then what I tell them is we're going to get so busy in your business, you're not going to have time to go to your job anymore. And that's yeah. exactly what happens. <laughs> so I'm literally able to take somebody from misery all the way to a scaled business ready to sell. 
I don't do the selling part of the business. Mm -hmm. And and how long does it take you on average to do that? I told you three months and, and six months for the other one. Now there's some people I've had clients who come to me and they said the, the, the gentleman that went to $3 million from $300,000 on the wholesale company. And he came back and he goes, I want to get to 5 million. And I go, okay, cool. How do you want to do that? And he said, I want to work with you to do that. And so now we're in the process of scale. So I will have clients who will achieve what they want to achieve, go out and enjoy that. And then the human condition is always when we get to this mountaintop, we look at this mountaintop and want to get there, you know, and that's that's good, that mm -hmm. drive that we have. And so helping to do that. Is this your passion, doing coaching and uh, trainings? Or are you involved in other businesses? This is all I do. This is all I do. I do have a consulting arm. I do have a, like, like I just did for the local government here. I just did an eight month leadership training where mm -hmm. the, it was for small business growth and where they could send their managers and, and, and put, you know, their, their future leaders in and start going through leadership. But it's all based on the same, same principles as what I do with the coaching and such. Yes. Uh -huh. So this I is my life. Cool. Other I than hang gliding, motorcycling, trout fishing. <laughs> <laughs> do you camping. have family and children? I do. Yeah, I have one son. He's uh, 27 years old. So he's he's a man, and I'm really, really, really proud of him. Uh, so, so you're a free man. <laughs> no, no, no small children around is what I meant. <laughs> oh, no, no young, but I love oh, little kids too. So mm -hmm. okay, cool. Yeah. And so I, I'm curious. So the governmental agency agency where the local one where you uh, gave the training leadership. Was the leadership training was was it open to the subliminal training you provided they were open to um, this I think it was but it's because of the way i teach it you know having been in business as long as i had i i i deliver everything in a business sense mm -hmm. so it's put together in a business sense so even though, you know, like you, you would hear it and think, well, how do you do that for business, you know, and get business owners to listen? But but yes, it, it it's set up in that fashion. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you, everyone, every person that went through that leadership, and I think there were 18 or 19 people, they all developed a dynamic vision. They all walk through the process in, in regards to leadership, how I tailored it for leadership, but they all walk through that process of that, through the process. And and, and I'll tell you the, the, what came back at the end and how people, I had business, individual business owners that, that ended up coming. I had um, uh, like managers or HR people from, from, you know, larger corporations that came in. Every single one of them talked about the impact it had on their business with mm -hmm. the information they gathered. Yeah. And I've had two of them, two, three of them come to me now for coaching for their business based on that. Mm -hmm. And when the companies realize that you're teaching their employees to be, become independent, are they happy with it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, no, because because it's not like that, though. Like the, 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 the people that came to me, the one person that came to me through a corporate, their their whole vision is around igniting the impact of that corporation that they're attached right, to. Right, right. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. I was just joking. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Understood. Once again, can you repeat your phone number and how people can reach you, the name of your website? Absolutely. So we'll probably put in the notes because the website Absolutely. is josephadrollshagen.com. <laughs> so we'll put that in there. But anybody can reach out to me at 864-614-3333. Three, three. And a lot of times when these are released, I get a lot of people. So if you get voicemail, just leave your name, number, you know, tie it back to the podcast and I'll call you back and you and I'll have a conversation. And I don't set a limit on the conversation. It could be two minutes if that's all you're comfortable with. It can be five, 10 minutes, whatever it is that that to help with whatever questions you have. And it's all to help you start from the moment you hang up that phone with me, achieving more in your life and enjoying your life more than you are today. Awesome. Joey, let's let's end this uh, lovely conversation. We are on a high note. What what is the best experience that you have when you're while you're coaching? What gives you the the kick? So I have to tell you a quick little story here is is um you know, in my 20s, I was married and we had five pregnancies. And the first two were born at 24 weeks. And we're on machines and equipment and, and, and passed away within hours. And then my son was born. 
And then we had two more pregnancies like the first two. So when I say I adore my son, I absolutely like, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. That's not big enough words. But on my son's first birthday, I wasn't home celebrating his life. I was in, I lived in Michigan at the time, but I was in Indiana building a sales territory because I was conditioned that a man gets a job and supports a family and hopefully lives long enough to enjoy some retirement. And I thought that's where I was supposed to be. And to this day, as I'm telling you this, like I can feel that missed moment of my life. So as I work with clients and as they start realizing what they're missing by all the exhaustive efforts and everything. And they start capturing some of that life back and they're at their children's sports or their events or whatever it may be home for a birthday or an anniversary. And man, that, that, that just fills my heart to know that they're doing better business wise than they were. And they have the time to really enjoy the special moments of their life. Love that. Thank you so much for this conversation. Yes, it's a great conversation.